Hey guys, welcome back to this Flutter app development series where we are creating that wallpaper app which no one wants. So in the last video we created a Firebase project and uploaded some wallpapers there. We also created a Flutter project and connected it to the Firebase. And we ended that video by running the Flutter demo app and making sure that everything is working. So from this video, I'll actually start coding up this app. Right now, I want this app to have three sections. First one is where users can see the wallpapers all at once. Then I want a place where users can see all the available categories of wallpapers. And at last, I want a place where users can see all their favorite wallpapers. All these places are just different ways from where users can view the wallpapers. And I want these views to be easily accessible and switchable. For this, I'll use a page view widget. I have already made a video on page view some time back. So if you want, you can take a look at it first. Link will be in the description. So let's get started. First, I'll remove all the comments from this file. For that, I'll first open the file tool by pressing Ctrl F. Once this tool is open, I'll press Alt R to switch to regex search. If you don't know what regex or regular expressions mean, I highly recommend that you search and learn what they are and how they work. But to explain in short, regex is a way to do pattern matching in text files. For example, when I type in slash slash dot star in find, it roughly translates to find a line which starts with double forward slash followed by any character any number of times. And that is why you can see this first comment is getting highlighted. Now if I press alt enter, it will select all the places where this pattern matches. And once we have selected all these comments, I'll press backspace to delete all of them. Now I can press Alt Shift F to format the file which will remove all the blank spaces. Next I'll remove all the floating action button code and instead I'll add a text widget as the body of this scaffold. Here I'll use the title from widget with a font size of 30. Let's also change the app title to that wallpaper app. And there you have it, the default template that I have been using in almost all of my Flutter videos. I should probably make a script to automate this task using python. Let me know if you would be interested in watching that. Anyways, now we can finally start writing some useful code. So I'll remove this center widget and add a page view widget. I'll use the builder named constructor for this page view. Since I only want 3 pages, I'll set the item count to 3. Next, for the item builder property, we will need a function which takes a build context and an index. For now, I'll return a center widget with text indicating the page number that we are on. Let's set the font size for this as 30 using text type. And if I save this code, you can see that we can now simply swipe through all these 3 pages. Next, let's try to show some more custom widget in this page view instead of this center text. For this, I'll have to create 3 new classes and I'll have to create a file for each one of them. The one where I'll display all the wallpapers will be called all underscore images dot dart. The one where I'll display all the categories of wallpapers will be called home dot dart. And finally, the one where I'll display favorite wallpapers of user will be called favorite dot dart. Now, I'll create a stateless widget class in all images dot dart file. It will be called all images. We will need to include the material dot dart file for stateless widget. Now, just to make sure that everything is still working, I'll add a similar center text widget with text as all images. Let's set the font size to 30 here too. Similar to this, I'll create a home class in home dot dart and favorite class in favorite dot dart. These two will display their respective class name. Now let's go to the main dot dart file. Here, inside the my home page state class, I'll create a variable called pages. This will be a list of all the three widgets that we just created. Now I can replace this item count with pages.length and instead of returning the center widget, I can return the widget at current index from our pages list. If I save this code, we will now see the class name instead of page number. This means our new stateless classes are working as expected. Next, I want to have a bottom navigation bar which can be used to switch between pages of this page view. 
For this, I'll use the bottom navigation bar property of our main scaffold. Here, I'll add a bottom navigation bar widget. And this widget needs a list of bottom navigation bar items. As we have three pages, I'll add three bottom navigation bar items in this list. For the icon property of these items, I'll use icon widgets with image, home and favorite icons. Bottom navigation bar items also need a title. So I'll add a text widget for each of this item with appropriate text. If I save this code, we'll get a bottom navigation bar in the app. Right now, bottom navigation bar and page view are not in sync. We will have to link them up manually. For this, I'll first add a variable called page controller. This will allow us to change the current page displayed by the page view whenever we want. I'll set the initial page for this controller as 1. This means by default we will always see the middle page. Next, for the bottom navigation bar, I'll create an integer with its initial value as 1. After this, let's go to the page view builder and set controller property to page controller. Next, I'll use the on page changed property. This property needs a function which takes in an integer as input. This will be the index of current page displayed by page view. Inside this function, I'll set current selected as index and then I'll put this line inside a set state call. Now we can set the current selected variable as current index property of bottom navigation bar. This will make sure that when a page is swiped, the correct icon in bottom navigation bar is highlighted. Now to sync changes from bottom navigation bar to page view, I'll use the on tap property of bottom navigation bar. This property also needs a function which takes in an integer as input, which is nothing but the index of current selected item from bottom navigation bar. Here too, I'll first set value of current selected as index and I'll then put this inside a set state call. One more thing that we'll have to do here is to use page controller to switch to the page at current index. For this, I'll use the jump to page method on page controller and I'll save this code. Effect of jump to page does not look so good, so I'll replace it with animate to page. For animate to page, we'll have to specify a curve and a duration. I'll set curve as fast out slow in and duration as 400 milliseconds. You can play around with these values to get the desired effect. And now if I save this code, you can see that we are able to smoothly animate to a different page using the bottom navigation bar. Now both page view and bottom navigation bar are perfectly in sync. So that was it for this video. We now have a solid design in place to start implementing the three views that I talked about at the beginning of this video. I hope that you were able to follow along. If you missed anything or just want to copy all this code, you can check out the GitHub repository linked in the description. If you liked the video, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more such content. Hope to see you in the next one.